reading is taken from Matthew chapter 28, starting at verse 1. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you so much, Dom. That is really helpful. Let's pray and then we're going to have a look at this passage together. So, Father, we thank you so much for your word and we pray, Lord, that it would go deep in us as we sit with you uh, in your word. We pray, Lord, that your word would bring life to us again. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So it'd be really helpful if you could keep your Bibles open to Matthew chapter 28 and we'll spend some time in that passage together. Now this passage is filled with joy and with excitement and with peace and the awesomeness of God. Jesus has risen and suddenly everything has changed yet again. Peace, the antidote to fear, is on offer. Assurance has arrived. But we won't fully grasp this assurance if we haven't walked through the shake-up that Jesus' followers experienced. And we won't be moved by the shake-up if we haven't sat at the foot of the cross where the Saviour died. And we won't exult in the work of the Saviour if we don't know sin in our own hearts. So let's backtrack a little bit and we're going to take these in order, looking at sin, the Saviour, the shake-up and finally the assurance. Now we find the concept of sin really difficult to grasp, even at the best of times. And in our day it has become particularly unpopular. Almost 80 years ago, in the Second World War, King George called the nation to prayer, but he was aware of God's greatness and our sinfulness. He knew human fallibility, and so therefore he said to the nation, we shall ask not that God may do our will, but that we may be enabled to do the will of God. So every so often sin and the fallibility of man really hit home. And I had one of these moments, in fact, a couple of weeks ago when I contemplated the signals that my body was giving me. I felt fatigue and an increased heart rate and a high temperature and these all signs of a virus and it dawned on me that there was a killer that was going around and this killer wasn't just in the neighborhood or even in my house but in fact this killer might be in my very body and that is what the realization of sin feels like knowing that something potentially deadly which ravages relationships and destroys family and brings fear and turns us in on ourselves isn't just a theoretical concept or something that we find in others, but rather something that runs deep in who I am 
as a person. And like with COVID-19, we can't just run away and hide from the problem. We need an exit plan. We need a vaccine. So enter the vaccine, the saviour. Imagine a man who walks in the fields every day and he grows attached to a particular colony of ants that he walks past. He sees how industrious they are, how busy they are, how hard working they are. But one particular day as this man walks into the field, he notices a fire that's being blown by the wind towards these ants. And so he gets down on his hands and, his, and knees and he shouts to these ants, Hurry! Get away! There's a fire that's coming for you! Flee for your lives! But these ants just ignore him and they carry on doing what they always do, living their busy lives. And so he hatches a plan. He takes a match and he lights a fire behind this termite mound with the wind blowing away from the termite mound so that there might be some burnt ground for these ants to stand on and to stay away from the fire that's coming. And so yet, yet again, he shouts to these ants, go onto the burnt ground, get away, this fire is coming. But they still don't respond. Finally, this man realizes that there's only one thing that he can do. And so he squeezes into the form of an ant and he sprints around that termite mound, shouting in a language that the ants know that they need to get out of that termite mound and get onto the ground that, he has been that has been burnt for them. And he does that until the fire eventually consumes him. And that's the story of the Saviour. And the burnt ground that he calls us to is that of the cross. He calls us to the cross where he died so that we might avoid what he went through. The theologian Michael Green therefore calls Good Friday the day that death died. How appropriate. And in these corona times, we might say that the cross that he gave himself, on the, so on the cross, he gave himself to create a vaccine, a dose which we can bear which means that we won't face the killer head on. But in medical science, there's always a time when a vaccine has been created but is untested, and we need to find out whether the work that has been done to create the vaccine has actually paid off. So this takes us up to the shake-up. Our lives have been dramatically shaken up in the past weeks where we've experienced something on a grand scale like we haven't seen for a long time. But still, this is very little compared to what the Marys experienced who enter our story in verse 1. They had spent time with Jesus which had completely changed uh, their lives as they knew it. They had sat at Jesus' feet listening to him as he spoke of the kingdom with such authority that they realised that they wanted to live the lives that Jesus was offering to them. And he had also warned them of the death that he was about to face. But it felt so surreal at the time to them. And then his words turned into reality. His death was horrific. Was this all in Jesus' plan? And suddenly fear gripped them. Then came the earthquake of verse 2. How appropriate when the ground of their lives had been shaken beneath them. And then the angel saying, don't be afraid. Joy and wonder starts to mix with the fear that's in their hearts as the angel leads them inside the tomb and they see where Jesus' body had been. 
but he isn't there anymore. And then the angel tells them, he has risen from the dead. Death has sustained a mortal wound. Can this mean that the vaccine has worked? So the Marys run back towards the disciples with their hearts in their mouths, afraid and yet filled with joy in verse 8. Is this hope true? Is this the shake-up uh, that is all part of God's plan? Is this what Jesus was trying to tell them about? Has the vaccine worked? And then there's the assurance. As they run off in obedience to the command of God, Jesus meets them and they fall at his feet in adoration, worshipping him. Uh, my wife is 32 weeks pregnant, had corona fairly badly and spent much of the two weeks uh, in bed. And there were times when all it took was for her to walk down the stairs. And yet again, I felt myself falling head over heels in love for her, my heart leaping like it did when we first met. And between us, we only have a marriage that lasts for a lifetime. Our relationship with Jesus is one that will endure through eternity. So fear vanishes for the Marys, as Jesus says, don't be afraid. The vaccine has worked. He is alive. Death is defeated. Jesus' rule, his authority, his kingdom is firmly established. And it is an amazing thing to have had the virus and to have come through it. You're suddenly Superman. There's nothing that's uh, worth being afraid of. And the same has to be true if someone has gone through the death of the virus for you. The killer can't con conquer you. And Jesus went through death on our behalf in order to defeat death. So we no longer have to live in fear. Our inner lives shouldn't be ones that are governed by fear since we walk in his freedom and his life, standing on that burnt ground. So Easter, this day that we're celebrating today, Jesus' resurrection is a time of assurance. Sin no longer needs to reign in us since our Saviour has died and the shake-up leads to the peace of assurance.